This video will explore the new Reformer Efficient Transformer model from Google AI. This model is really interesting because it presents a way to approximate full attention and attention over long sequences, as well as ideas to reduce the memory requirements of training transformer models. This idea of increasing the attention span is really exciting in a similar evolution from a simple recurrent neural network to a long short-term memory network and to the transformer. The idea of increasing attention span allows the model to incorporate more context from the past when making current decisions. A lot of research has come up in the space of expanding the attention span, such as Facebook's adaptive attention span and OpenAI's sparse transformers. Most of these looking at how to take advantage of the sparsity in attention, how usually if you have these uh, long sequences due to the uh, query key transpose pass through a softmax, only a small amount of the words or you know the pixels, whatever context you're using attention on, is going to actually contribute to the output anyways. So this paper uses a locality sensitive hashing to increase the attention span by approximating full attention and only focusing on the dot product between keys most similar to the query that are actually going to contribute to the attention in the end, even if you did the full attention. This paper also integrates reversible layers from the RevNet architecture to avoid storing the intermediate activations and reduce memory costs of training transformer models at the expense of longer training speed. This video will explore the Reformer Efficient Transformer model from Google AI. This is a new paper presenting a few new techniques to dramatically increase the attention span in transformers, the length of the sequence of which the transformer attends on, and reduce the memory cost, particularly the memory cost associated with attending over long sequences, as well as storing the intermediate activations through these uh, multiple layers in these transformer networks. Improvements in the reformer model compared to the standard transformer architecture is an improvement in memory efficiency, reducing the memory from the order L squared required to have this uh, query times the transposed key matrix of order L squared to order L log L by having this kind of an LSH attention mechanism while also reducing the amount of uh, memory you need to do to store the intermediate activations by using these reversible layers. So you're increasing your memory efficiency, but you're trading this off for computation speed. So the key idea in the reformer and a lot of these papers like adaptive attention span from Facebook and sparse transformers from OpenAI is that they're trying to take advantage of the sparsity of attention to attend to longer sequences. So even if you say extend the uh, sequence length that you're attending on to 64,000, you still would probably only look at 32 or 64 words to actually uh, incorporate when you do that uh, query times a key transpose divided by this normalizing factor, and you put it through that softmax function, you're only gonna have so many words that you're really attending to. The softmax function is gonna blow up large values and really shrink small values. So the idea is that you're taking advantage of the sparsity of attention by using this approximate attention-based uh, LSH for the nearest neighbor. So this uh, locality sensitive hashing technique is going to help you to uh, you know approximate the way that you do the query times the key matrix to only do the, only multiply it by the keys that are similar to the query because the way you do this dot product is that uh, you know the only the similar uh, keys are even going to come out with a large value anyway so this is a technique to reduce this computation dramatically and make it so you can uh, attend over longer sequences without having to look at all of the keys then they're going to introduce this reversible layer so as in another paper titled RevNets they're gonna introduce this uh, way of structuring the output of the layers such that you can break the Y output into Y1 and Y2, and you can sort of use this way to backtrack and get to X1 from Y2, and do this kind of a calculation in order to only have to store the activations on the last layer, and then you can propagate backwards during training, and then during uh, updating the network. So the idea is that instead of having to store all the intermediate activations for backpropagation, you would have more computation through backprop because you gotta recompute the outputs but you save that memory cost of storing the activations. We'll start looking at the reformer by looking at the reversible layers because it's a bit easier to understand than the LSH attention approximation. The reversible layers also presented in RevNet is this idea of having to avoid storing the activations in the intermediate layers. So these transformer uh, networks, they are composed of these blocks where you pass the uh, query key and value matrices into the self-attention layer and then a feed forward layer. So the idea is that you repeat this block like six to 12 times forming this deep neural network and then naturally the memory uh, requirements of that kind of an architecture come with respect to the number of layers. So the idea here is that you want to get rid of this bottleneck in the memory by having to store all of these intermediate activations of each layer in order to do back propagation. So the idea behind reversible layers is that you decompose the output into Y1 and Y2 such that you can reconstruct the input so that this way you only store the activations in the last layer and then you will uh, you know, do this computation as you're going backwards in order to recover the intermediate activations. And the benefit of that is even though it definitely increases your computing time and will make this training take longer, 
you don't have to worry about running out of memory with this. So the idea here is that, say you break it, your output into y1, y2, you can then deconstruct, say, x2 by taking y2 and subtracting the output of the feedforward network when you give it y1. So the y2 is a uh, result of applying this feedforward network to y1, and you still have access to this feedforward network, and you can run inference during backpropagation as well. So what you do is you take this uh, separate component of the y1, and you pass it through the feedforward network, and then you just do y2 minus whatever this is, and that's how you get x2. And then you can do the same thing with the attention layer on x2 in order to get back x1. And then x1, x2 would become y1, y2, and you would keep going backwards doing this kind of a thing. Now we'll get how you go from the order L squared memory bottleneck to order L with respect to the reformer efficient transformer network. So the first idea is that the order L squared bottleneck comes from this uh, query times a key transpose operation with respect to the attention layer. So the idea here is that the query matrix has the dimension length by D sub K, D sub K, K being the embedding dimension for the queries, and then the key is also gonna have the same D sub K by length. So this matrix multiplication is gonna come out as length by length, or order L squared in the memory requirement to store this matrix. So the first idea is that instead of doing this, uh, multiplying all the queries by the keys at once, we're gonna index the queries individually with the Q sub I. So we have these individual vectors of dimension one by uh, D sub K. So when you do one uh, by D sub K times D sub K by length, it'll come out one by length. And then, so you avoid having to intermediately store these uh, length by length matrices. So this individual indexing is the first speed up to or not speed up, but the first uh, you know, uh, memory reduction in order to reduce the memory requirement of this. Now we'll look at the locality sensitive hashing approximation to attention. So the motivation is that you're doing this dot product attention where you're taking the queries and you're multiplying them by the keys. So what you're doing is you're doing this element wise uh, multiplication and then summing it up. So it's really a measure of similarity. So say x1 is zero, y1 is 85, x2 is 85 and y2 is zero. Even though it has high magnitude at certain spots, you're gonna get zero as the output of this dot product compared to this kind of x1 is 10, y1 is 10, and they both have similar values, so they're gonna multiply and be 100, plus 100 is 200. So this kind of dot product attention being approximated as a measure of similarity, and we're gonna look at how the locality sensitive hashing does this kind of a similarity metric in order to sort the sequence. So if you have this sequence of, say, 64,000 words, it's gonna sort it such that you only do the query times, say, like the most 16 similar uh, keys and then you're going to kind of sort it along this way. The idea of LSH attention is to approximate full attention by only multiplying the queries by the keys that are the most similar and are thus going to do uh, dominate the full attention dot product anyways, especially as it gets passed through that softmax function. So locality sensitive hashing starts off by framing the similarity problem as an intersection of sets. And this is a really interesting algorithm that's applicable to things like plagiarism detection in documents, uh, collaborative filtering where you're filtering between uh, users, uh, picking out different products or watching different movies, things like this, and also applications like uh, nearest neighbor image search where you have maybe these low dimensional uh, vector representations where images are passed through convolutional networks, and then you wanna compare these uh, vector representations to find the most similar images. So the idea is to frame similarity as an intersection of sets problem. So this idea of Jacquard similarity is you take the intersection divided by the union. So you just see this random example of having A as a set of one, two, three, four, uh, B, one, and two, and so the similar, the Jacquard similarity between A and B would be these two over the union, which is four, and then the uh, Jacquard similarity of A and C is they have this two in common, and the union is gonna be eight. So this is the high level idea of locality sensitive hashing is you're framing similarity as an intersection of sets problem. A great description of locality sensitive hashing is found in this book, Mining Massive Datasets, and this video series is linked in the description of this video, and this image particularly came from Finding Similar Sets, Again, the video is linked in the description. So this pipeline is describing a motivating example of finding plagiarism by comparing the uh, similarity between documents and the text that appears in the document. So the first stage of this pipeline is shingling, which is like n-grams, where you're extracting the strings of length k that appear in the document and you're just uh, sliding that k size window across the document to form this set of all the strings that appear in the document of this length. So naturally this set is gonna be gigantic, especially if k is, you know, say 10, or some longer uh, length like that. So then the idea is to reduce the size of the set by doing min hashing. So min hashing is gonna take, say, a string of length k, and it's gonna hash it into a bucket. And the bucket is gonna be defined with uh, less bytes than the strings would. So say you use four bytes to encode the bucket number, and then you'd use like nine or 10 to encode the strings. So now you have these buckets that are, the purpose of the bucket is, again, just to reduce the storage cost of the uh, strings of length k. 
So now what you're doing is the locality sensitive hashing where you're looking for the similarity based on set membership. So you have all these documents like document one, document two, and then they're uh, mapped into these uh, buckets that you know they contain the uh, strings of length K that are mapped to the same bucket. So what you do with locality sensitive hashing is you randomly permutate the order of the documents and then you look for the first uh, appearance of each set and then you use this in order to find similarity. So it'd probably make a little more sense by uh, reading this textbook chapter. So just another idea of the LSH algorithm is that you're gonna randomly use different hash functions and repeat this in order to get a better estimate of similarity. So in the paper they show this diagram of doing the rotation between vectors and showing how this results in different uh, bucket assignments. So this is kind of the idea of the buckets that we're talking about. You would, uh, in this first case, you rotate the vectors and then this one ends up in bucket zero, this one ends up in bucket three. So you're not gonna align this as being similar, but when you rotate it this way, it's two and two. So the high level idea of this is that you can see how doing the different hash functions and this kind of uh, analogy with like a unit sphere and two dimensional space is showing that vectors that are nearby are resulting in similar bucket placement with the hash functions compared to vectors that are farther away. So to tie this back into the main uh, motivating idea of this, the LSH attention, is we want to group the keys together based on this kind of LSH bucketing. So we take the uh, comparison between the queries and the keys, we do the LSH bucketing in order to get the similarity between the keys, and then you chunk them and do the attention on the similar keys. So another interesting characteristic of this is that you attend on the same bucket and the previous bucket as well. So the blue would be the most similar, and then you have the second where you have probably a mix of uh, you know, K most similar, and then say like tier two similar, and you're also gonna attend backwards, which is kind of interesting as well. An interesting comment I saw when I was looking at the Reddit discussion of this paper is somebody wondering about if you have these randomly initialized uh, weight matrices for the queries and the keys, won't this kind of uh, random assignment of similarity be permanently stuck? Well, I think that kind of the way that these nearest neighbors get updated is that similar to uh, like uh, this paper exploring randomly wired neural networks where you're searching for the edges within a neural network that make up a sparse network within the overall set of possible edges you could use, you have this kind of differentiation where even though in the case of the exploring randomly wired networks, you're gonna explicitly increase the probability of edges that weren't even originally included. In this case, I think you're just looking at the uh, top end of that where you're decreasing the probability of having the similarity because you still pass this through that uh, uh, weight, matrix, weight matrix that assigns an input into the similarity. So that matrix is gonna have a partial derivative that will maybe you know perturb it so it's less similar as you go on through the training. These are two other papers that are interesting with respect to the area of increasing the attention span or increasing the length of the sequences L with respect to the attention layers. So this paper is sparse transformers from OpenAI. It looks like what this does is it breaks up the uh, attention into the multiple heads. So each of the heads of the attention, sort of like the stack of these attention layers, is gonna look at a different subset of this sequence. So that way they can fit the uh, larger sequences into uh, the attention layer by just having it explicitly passed into each of the heads of the attention layer. So in this other paper from Facebook, the adaptive attention span has this uh, parameter over the attention span of each transformer head. So basically they have uh, different attention spans in each of the layers of the network. So it's a bit of a different idea than the reformer where you know each of these layers would have a high attention span. There wouldn't be like a variance of attention span between layers. Thanks for watching this overview of the reformer efficient transformer architecture from Google AI. I hope from this explanation you were able to get a good sense of how the reversible layers help you to avoid storing the intermediate activations, as well as to get a general sense of what this uh, locality sensitive hashing is about and sort of the high level idea about how this might uh, reduce the memory cost of storing these long sequences and attending over long sequences. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos.